In this presentation, I will be dissecting the concept of primitivism in art, as well as analyzing French painter Paul Gauguin's pedophilic exploitation of indigenous women and girls during his artistic career. Paul Gauguin was a post-impressionist painter. He was born into French bourgeois middle class and over time sought simplicity away from materialistic Europe. He had fantasized about Polynesian islands and adapting to the quote-unquote primitive lifestyle there. He sailed to Tahiti in 1891 and soon the subject matter of his paintings began to change. The brownness of indigenous soil and indigenous body were used for his poor aesthetic. He had women and children model nude despite them in reality being fully clothed for the most part like a romanticized reflection of his racist sexual fantasies. He has autocized the Tahitian land and its people while capitalizing on this idea of primitivism. So what is primitivism anyway? Smart history describes it as the appreciation and limitation of cultural products and practices perceived to be primitive or at an earlier stage of a supposed common scale of human development. This definition contains a basic contradiction the primitive is admired and even seen as a model, but at the same time it is also presumed to be inferior because it is not fully developed. The concept of primitivism pardons the exoticization and fetishization of black indigenous POC existence while promoting white saviorism for the perpetuation of supremacy. Primitive is just a pretty way to say savage. This language is a tool used to justify colonization, genocide, sexual violence, and even gentrification today. Under primitivism, white supremacy's imperialistic, chauvinistic need for power, in conjunction with cultural appropriation, masquerades as appreciation at the expense of every non-white body. Paul Gauguin hid his fetishization of brown island girls behind the concept of primitivism. Primitivism made him a painter, an appreciator of other cultures, a philanthropist, a savior. He really did fool people into believing his altruism and inclusivity with the exploitation of his token brown girl subject. His abuse was diluted with pretty pinks and soft blues. He depicted Tahitian land and women to appeal to Western standard, and it is believed that his reliance on income from Parisian buyers further influenced that. Let's take a look at Gauguin's Are You Jealous? In this painting, two sisters sit beside each other endearingly uncomfortably. Their gaze fades into the direction opposite from one another, and their faces rest peacefully. They aren't talking, but they are in communication. In his diary, Gauguin writes, two sisters are lying after bathing in the graceful poses of resting animals. They are not arguing, despite the title of this piece. Instead, they are talking about whom of the two had more sex the night before. Gauguin further describes the lack of jealousy compared to that of the competitive, monogamous Western world, as if it is surprising to see civil engagements between quote-unquote primitive people. The tone of his writing ironically exhibits jealousy as he is envious of the non-jealous culture of the Tahitian community. However, Gauguin is only fantasizing about this exotic utopia. He presumes that sexual relations between the people of beautiful tropical islands are playful and harmless, and the ignorant assumption that they are is actually extremely harmful. Not only does Gauguin sexualize these women's bath time and even compares them to animals, he portrays them in a deceptively gentle manner with sexually charged undertones. The position of their bodies, the title of the painting, and the entry in Gauguin's diary imply sensuality as a default to Tahitian women. Ultimately, to harbor preconceived ideas about the sexuality of a culture is ethnocentric, misogynistic, and dismissive of the abuse and exploitation that happens within one's own community. But because the native Tahitians are untouched by the advancements in technology of the Western world, Gauguin believes that primitiveness is also interpersonal. He talks about these people as if they are children, naive, innocent, unaware, powerless. Moving on, Gauguin's Why Are You Angry? also offers great insight to the way he perceived indigenous people. Objectively, the painting provides symbolic imagery of womanhood, such as the chickens and their babies representing fertility and motherhood, or the vignette of women in the background, one young and unclothed, the other old and physically frail, a depiction of life as a cycle. But the exclusive color palette is romantically suggestive. The trees are green and most of the women's garments are blue, both contrasting with the pink ground, the pink hut, and the pink mountains. Rather than using a standard brown to depict the reality of the scene, Gauguin explores a rosy pink to make the land appear more ethereal, again playing into his exploitive dreams of an exotic fantasy land. The post-impressionists are known to paint what they observe, like documentation of history, 
but they often used peculiar colors to evoke emotion or to tell a story between the lines. Paul Gauguin's use of color is especially provoking because it suggests the beautification of what he sees as quote-unquote primitive. Had he painted with realistic neutral tones, this piece may have not implied the dreamlike environment of these indigenous islands. Using his artistic license and white judgment, Gauguin presented this land and their people in a manner pleasurable to the Western eye. Furthermore, the composition of the, this painting pays recognition to the bourgeois French middle class. Let me explain. Comparing it to Seurat's painting, Sunday on La Grande Jete, the viewer can see how similar the compositions are. Gauguin is not paying homage to Seurat, but he is instead competing with the latter. Gauguin takes this real-life indigenous scene and reimagines it as attached to European wealth for the sake of propaganda. Usually, when white scenes or icons are reappropriated with black or brown representation by black or brown artists, that is an action of reclamation. They are taking back the space that they were pushed out of. They are claiming divinity and purity and power. But this is not the case. Gauguin, a French painter, is taking a historical art piece that is exclusively European white and creating somewhat of a rendition, only to allude to European white standard, yet feign quote-unquote primitive beauty by tokenizing native brown women. And remember, freelance painting is Gauguin's only job. So he is exploiting these folks solely for sexual pleasure, power, and money. He is colonizing brownness and crafting it into his art to gain recognition from European powers. Gauguin's paintings simply reflect how he viewed the Polynesian world through a white lens, how he captured and illustrated indigeneity with white paint, and how inaccurate indigenous stories are when told by a white man. Paul Gauguin's work was revolutionary in the sense that his primitive style indirectly yet very publicly condoned the exoticization of and the ethnocentrism toward non-Western countries. His subject matter may have been different from that of his counterparts, but his whiteness still functioned the same. Manet's Olympia is very hierarchical in that the black character is a servant to the white subject. Gauguin's subtle establishment of the same hierarchy created by white supremacy is just as systematically effective because he, a white cishet man, decides how brown indigenous women are represented. And though it is through a romanticized, gentle tone, the glamorized imagery of their bodies and skin leaves room for implications of submissiveness and sensuality. Gauguin's stay in Tahiti was also the timeline of his sexual conquest. He married a child in between forcing other women into submission as he painted them nude. He even colonized their gender and subjected them to both the binary and western roles, rebuking the fact that the native Tahitian culture has a third gender. He westernized indigeneity through art and sex in the name of capitalism. He monetized and made profit from the same bodies he abused in a way that paraded their exploitation as if it was beautiful. The idea that, quote, any representation is good representation is indirectly complacent to the violence against people of color. When folks have the power to portray a different community to their discretion, more often than not, the description of that community is flawed. When I look at Gauguin's paintings, I don't see myself. No matter how much these figures look like me, no matter how much their land looks like my home, I can't find myself in that familiarity. The women in these paintings and I are beyond delicacy beyond simplicity. We are not submissive. We are not meek. We are not one-dimensional. We are greater than sexual pleasure, and we are no white man's whore.